What's up, High Vibers? This is Dee Dee with Living on High Vibe. And in today's video, I have a question for you. Are you a middle-aged loser that has accomplished absolutely nothing in your life? If so, you have come to the right channel and the right video because I can relate with the feelings of not feeling adequate for where you're at in life. And also I've had the privilege of my immediate family members telling me that I am a middle-aged loser that has accomplished absolutely nothing in my life. So let's talk about it. Before we get started though, make sure that you subscribe to my channel, click the bell notification, tickle the like button, all the good karma stuff. So with this video, I wanna come to the point of why is this even happening? What's the deal with the middle age? Why is there a middle life, midlife crisis and all of that stuff going on? What is the magic about it? Why is it happening that people are giving up on their lives? That they're becoming unhinged and depressed and giving up? First of all, never give up, right? Anyways, I don't do really scripts. I don't read anything. I'm staring at my keyboard from where I'm sitting. It's behind the camera. But for this video, I have a couple of things prepared. I have here a bunch of questions, which I'm going to answer in order to figure out what is it about this freaking middle age? Question number one, what is a loser? Define a loser. Okay, I have here a Merriam-Webster dictionary open. And there are two explanations. Number one, a person or thing that loses, especially consistently. Two, a person who is incompetent or unable to succeed. What is success? Okay, they're saying, okay, you're a loser because you're not successful. So what is success to begin with? We're defining a loser, right? So you're a loser, so you're not successful. What is success? What is a success? So. I understand the loser is when you have one soccer team and another soccer team and you're playing against each other, your team wins, the other team is a loser. Okay, but in life? So let's say Elon Musk is the richest person in the world, allegedly. And then let's say Bill Gates is the third richest. Whatever, that's always changing, but you know what I mean, right? So you think that Bill Gates is sitting there and thinking like, oh, I'm such a loser. Elon Musk is richer than me, I'm such a loser. No, it's complete BS. See, it's a perspective because there are literally billions of people who would love to have, you know, forget billions, they would love to have a million. Some people would be happy if you just give them $10,000. So it is all subjective. So if it's all subjective, where's it coming from? You think actually this is where it's coming from. You, it is coming from you comparing yourself to others. Oh, he has a house like this and I have a house like this. His house is better and mine is crappier, so I'm a loser. Okay, so does it make sense? Not really, right? Why are you comparing yourself? You need to live your life and focus on yourself because you have your own life experiences, you have your own ambitions, you have your own dreams, and you have your own trauma to process as you go in and about life. What is the definition of loser? For me, I also have a definition of loser. The, a loser is somebody who goes through life unconscious without ever processing any of their inner feelings, without developing as a person, just chasing the next shiny thing and keeping up with the Joneses. That's a miserable way to live, but for many people, keeping up with the Joneses is the uh, dream, the, the proof of success that you're able to keep up with the Joneses so you're so freaking successful. And so if you're, if I'm just sitting for 20 years and processing my trauma and working on some fundamentals where I think that makes me happy and if I live by myself um, and live true to myself, right, then I'm a loser. No, I don't think so. You want to think I'm a loser? I don't care. What, what I care. So your problem of you feeling like a loser comes from the fact that you're comparing yourself and you have been comparing yourself since ever since you went as a child, you've been bored into, you've been drilled into your freaking head that you have to compete and you have to compare yourself to others. Look at the Johnny, he has better grades. Look at, nah, nah, nah. well, in math, right? But you're excelling in something else. But no, they will not admit and uh, congratulate you on this other thing that you succeeded because they think that you have to be like Johnny. So no, screw that. So stop comparing yourself. That is the only way you can not feel like a loser. So next, why 
are you considered a loser? Why? Because we live in society and the society has standards. There are various umbrellas you can fit into. I live in America. We have an umbrella here for success. To measure it is if you have achieved the so-called American dream. Do you have a nice house, two, three cars, and do you, are you happily married and having three kids and two dogs and big yard and white picket fence? And can you go on these vacations and maybe you have a boat? Oh yeah, you, can, you answered yes to this question. So yeah, you are a successful person. You have achieved the American dream. What? This is so silly. For me personally, the type of person I am, American dream is an American nightmare. No. So if you don't want to get married and you don't want to have kids and you're okay with a two bedroom, one bathroom home, or even God forbid, and an apartment in a city, oh God. And if you have just a small little city car and you don't have a truck and a boat and a freaking RV, oh my God, such a loser, such a loser. Can you imagine? This is complete BS. So the society and large is telling you that you have to accomplish your American dream. And in order to do so, you have to get mar married by a certain time. You have to make a certain amount of money and your life is going to be looking like this. So meanwhile, this is all facade. You know, if you're in other countries, there might be deviances and cultures, religions, it's going to impose their box onto you, where you wherever you're from, wherever you are right now. The problem is not you. The problem is them. And that is not a, pop a popular opinion because everybody says, everybody from mental health specialists to spiritual gurus, they're like, oh, you don't like something? They're telling you something. Oh, you're doing something wrong. No, you're doing nothing. You need to live true to yourself. And then you are going to be happy as opposed to, well, you have to accomplish whatever, right? So next, why is middle age so triggering? Middle age is super triggering because you've been comparing yourself for quite some time and now you kind of, you know, about 20 years is when you realize this is a facade, this is BS. It's absolutely horrifying how many people I encounter if I go out and talk to men, talk to women, some men want to have romantic involvement, so you wind up going on a date, but they've been married for 20 years, they're getting divorced, and they admit it was full of abuse. My partner became an alcoholic. My partner was a functioning alcoholic before I even married them, and they were hiding it from me. My partner is a porn artist. All kind of stuff like this. I realize I myself have trauma and I have not resolved it, right? So it just goes on and on and on and on, but people will realize around the middle age that their life is BS. Why? Because they have just been keeping up with the Joneses and keeping up the facade. That's why middle age. That's why people get unhinged and do crazy stuff and suddenly buy 10 sports cars and go broke and have a 18 year girlfriend, 18 year old girlfriend when you're 55. because they just, they just go unhinged. They're just like, oh my God, I've missed out on this and that. Instead of living true to themselves, they bought into this BS, whatever their culture, wherever they're from is imposing on them, such as American dream, such as I need to be the man of the house and my woman needs to be a stay at home mom. And then the stay at home mom and was, oh, whatever. It's just a rabbit hole of crap. Lastly, I want to just talk about dealing with these people day to day. There are a lot of people and the people who impose this on you are going to be squares. I call them squares because that's what they are in their mentality. They're square. They're fitting themselves and they want to put everybody else in the box. You need to realize the squares are everywhere, but especially they're going to be seen in places like churches, like corporate structures and also family with places like religious and sp spiritual places if they become toxic they cannot really keep the boundaries that you impose on them 
you'll probably need to part ways. Workplace, you need to be nice and kind to people. Just be a decent human being. But you need to know that these people are squares. So give up on these kind of people. Just be communicating as little as possible, as little as you need it. But if you need to choose people to hang out after work, do not choose the squares, okay? It doesn't matter because they are going to climb the corporate ladder. They don't have any concept of like being a decent human being for the most part. They just wanna take care of themselves being a square and in the box of the whatever they're trying to accomplish. And they're also going to, without any problems, backstab you and none of that matters. So actually, if you have a family member, they're unable to control their urges to put you in the box. You will need to reduce the, yeah, you know, the communication. But you might also need to go no contact. It is what it is. It's not in that case even about them being, you know, a square or not square. It's about somebody not respecting somebody's boundaries. When you say, hey, I don't want to be talked like that. I don't want to be called names. So if you cannot respect that, then it doesn't matter that you're part of family, but I need to not interact with you anymore because you are unable to follow basic boundaries. So sorry, bro. Anyways, enough was the rant. I'll see you next video. Leave me a comment with these experiences and never give up on life. Live your life on your terms and your conditions. And that's about it. I'll see you next video.